define tuxedo gun. An expensive but aesthetically pleasing gun of almost exclusively all metal construction. It typically offers few, if any, pragmatic advantages over less expensive handguns and usually at the cost of higher weight and decreased capacity. From a purely fiscal standpoint, however, tuxedo guns also tend to be good investments. See also BBQ gun, CF, Colt of the P7. Now that's my definition of a tuxedo gun and I felt it necessary to open this video with the definition. That's because I'm about to praise the SIG P210 carry as a carry gun and it needs to be done against the appropriate context. Many of you know that my reviews, especially on concealed carry handguns, are driven from a practical standpoint. Remember, I'm the guy who compiles and publishes a chart of the dimensions of every micro compact handgun every couple of years. Side note, I think it's about time for a re-up on those videos. The SIG P210 is an aesthetically pleasing all-metal handgun that offers few pragmatic advantages over other common carry guns, although it's a little bit heavier and with only a nine-round total capacity. From a fiscal standpoint, however, it'll probably be a strong investment. The P210 carry is a tuxedo gun. That means I'm not gonna get on here and say that the SIG P210 carry is a smarter carry option than something like the outstanding SIG P365XL, which has a greater capacity, smaller overall size, and lighter weight. Oh, and also like half as expensive. But you know, sometimes you just wanna carry a goddamn tuxedo gun and there's nothing wrong with that. Rule number one. If I'm going to a place where I think I'm going to have to use a gun, I don't go. Rule number two, if I'm going out in the general public, I'm going to carry the most practical gun that makes sense under those circumstances. And rule number three, if I'm going to a low-risk event like a wedding or something formal, I'm bringing my bow tie, a roll of condoms, and a gun that can get the job done and maybe serve as a conversation piece. It's very American, I know but it feels great, man. So yeah, there are significant drawbacks to carrying a 210 for sure. Unlike the P365XL, no optics mounting capability, it's relatively heavy at 29 ounces, a half pound heavier than the XL, but holding four fewer total rounds. But it does have some advantages to offset the weight and capacity penalties. The legendary SIG P210 was introduced in 1949 and was issued to tens of thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands, of European police officers and soldiers over the past 73 years. I'm going to skip over the history of this gun because there's plenty of it on YouTube out there and we went over it in my review of the American Made P210. I absolutely loved making that video and during that review I had the privilege of interviewing one of SIG's engineers on the 210 project, Tim Butler. If you want to know more about the 210 and SIG's reissued version of it, go back and find that review. I'll try to remember to, to drop a card here so you guys can check that out. So the SIG P210 is well known as a weird hybrid of like an old school high-end European service gun and a match pistol. The full-size P210 has a steel frame and it's heavy as shit at 37 ounces with a full-size 5-inch barrel and ergonomic wood grips. The 210 Carry, on the other hand, is meant to take all the best features of the 210, but in a lighter, smaller version while maintaining the same level of performance. The first time I saw the 210 Carry was, again, at SHOT Show 2020. I went to a private range event with SIG during the show, and that's the first time I got to pick up this handsome carry gun, of course. I was in love, and I was shooting mag after mag after mag at this event until the attendant asked me to stop burning through SIG's ammo. SIG has been threatening to release this damn thing for two years now, over two years now, but the day's finally here, so buckle up for a review because it was a lucky St. Paddy's Day for me. That's when my P210 carry showed up after that long, long wait. Bear in mind, this one is a T&E or a test and evaluation copy. That means it it's not unusual that this gun had clearly been shot quite a bit whenever I received it, but what was strange is that when I got this gun, the slide was locked completely open. I'm thinking maybe this is the same gun I shot at SHOT Show two years ago and somebody locked the slide open, tossed it into a closet because the recoil spring whenever I got it was stiffer than John Lovell's morals. Whenever I would bring the slide all the way to the rear, I would feel the slightest hesitation for the gun to go back into battery. And when it did, it would come to a stop about nine tenths of an inch short of complete battery like that. I figured this was gonna cause some problems at the range, but I also figured the best way to fix that was to work it out a little bit. And I was right on both counts. I cycled it, walking around the house, stoplights in the car, 
in my office, in the meeting with human resources, asking me why I'm cycling a gun in the office. Even so, notwithstanding the fact that I manually racked this thing a few hundred times before I hit the range, the 210 carry didn't want to strip the top round off of the magazine, and periodically it would also choke up and not go completely back into battery whenever we were firing it. At this point, we weren't sure if this was like a magazine issue or a recoil spring issue, but like a cute Starbucks barista, all it needed was a little slap on the butt and it got running again. After a couple of magazines, it started cycling flawlessly, but it still had trouble stripping the top round off the magazine and getting it into the chamber. But after we shot the first box, it was off to the races and no looking back. We must have limbered up the recoil spring in this thing because we had no issues whatsoever of any kind for the rest of the half case of ammo that we shot through it with myself, Ryan, Sam, and Joe running mags back to back to back to back. Thus, it seemed like our already pretty well used T&E gun just needed a new recoil spring, probably a result of it being stored for maybe a long period of time with the action fully open. And by the way, for everyone who suspects that gun reviewers get cherry-picked guns, you'd be absolutely shocked if you knew how frequently stuff like this happens. So that said, this clearly isn't an issue with the P210 carry, it was just a maintenance thing. But you guys know that I just like to give you the complete story in all of my reviews anyways. The SIG P210 carry is an all-metal, aluminum frame, single stack, single action only carry pistol that's the smaller version of the American-made SIG P210, which is itself a modified version of the original Swiss P210 pistol. The Americanized version of the 210 has been updated with the SIG short action locking system instead of the original lugged action, which will disgust 5% of you, intrigue 5% of you, and mean literally nothing to 90% of you. I'll let you guys fight about the actions in the comments. Like the original, the American P210, including the carry model, have a slide that rides inside of the frame, kind of like a CZ75, which is thought to give better accuracy. God, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Fuck yeah. Dead center. Boom. Totally. than a conventional slide outside the frame pistol. The P210 carry itself is only a slightly modified version of the full-size Classic. While the SIG P210 Classic Target, sold by SIG, weighs a whopping 38 ounces, the new carry version is a half pound lighter, and that's because it uses an aluminum frame in a 4.1 inch barrel instead of the steel frame in the 5 inch barrel from the classic model. The 4.1 inch barrel on this gun is about a tenth of an inch longer than the barrel on a common Glock 19, which means you're going to get great ballistic performance from a compact carry gun, but we'll talk more about that in just a second. In lieu of the adjustable target sights for most 210s, the carry's got night sights, which is exactly what you want in a carry pistol. Finally, the 210 carry ditches the gorgeous walnut grips from the target model in favor of very grippy G10 panels. I think that the 210 carries a great looking gun, but perhaps my only complaint aesthetically is about the grips. I like the original G10 checker grips that I saw in the 2020 model at shot. The important thing is I don't think I would change anything about the SIG P210 carrier, otherwise you get too far afield of the spirit of this pistol. Yeah, red dot mounting options would be cool, but it would also be perverse on an elegant pistol like the P210. So if you've already bitched about the lack of red dot compatibility in the comments, either edit the comment to say you're sorry or punch yourself in the dick right now. Also, as you'll see in a second, you don't really need an optic with this one. It's easy to say for comparative purposes that it's a quarter pound heavier than a Glock 19 with a little bit longer barrel but holding seven fewer rounds, but again, that's not a fair comparison. This is a slim, single stack pistol that packs match gun accuracy into a slender frame. That's what the 210's known for, and that's something that's really not said about polymer frame double stack pistols. As I'll explain in just a moment, this really is a gun for closet 1911 guys who just don't want to admit that they're closet 1911 guys, and maybe I'm in the closet. Please don't extract that sound bite and use it against me. After we worked out that recoil spring issue, the 210 carry shot like a dream. We shot at seven yards, 21 feet. Damn. Yeah. Jesus. Two in the X, one flyer, clearly my fault. 
And then check that shit out. There's five rounds just right there. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I mean, for rapid fire, I mean, holy crap, look at that. That's two magazines. So now we're talking about some pretty decent accuracy now that this thing is it's kind of broken in and now it's running. But, I mean, most of the two magazines. So, what, 16, 17 rounds, depending. And you got one, two, three, four, five, six here, and you got 10 all in one little at seven yards. Pretty good. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, relatively, like, not quite, like, as fast as I can rapid fire, but rapid fire, like, a couple of mags on each of the targets, and it's like, boom, just almost blew out the 10 ring. That one pretty much blew out the 10 ring. This one, close to it. This one, you know, that's a full mag minus, in the 10 ring, minus one. So, the thing shoots. I mentioned that there's no way to mount an optic on the 210 carry, but maybe you don't need to. I was curious to see how the 210 stacked up against my P365XL with my Holosun optic. You bet I brought the XL to the range. Turns out they performed almost identically. Oh my god, I need to re-zero this optic. But, you know, you can see just rapid fire. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds all touching. A couple of flyers. So, you know, performance... I'm not going to say that I performed better with the 365 XL and the optic. It's funny because when you go from shooting the 210 carry, which has a trigger that's almost got a weird brain link, like the big slug thing from Starship Troopers had with all the other bugs. You know what I'm talking about, the, the movie from the 90s or whatever, and the bugs are shitting asteroids into space at Earth and whatever. And then there's the big one at the end, and it's got the mind link, you know, where it tells the other bugs, what to do. The 210 trigger is exactly like that. You kind of mind meld with it. And it's so subtle, so crisp. It's like you think about pulling the trigger and it goes. Anyways, before you got off on some weird tangent about aliens, we were talking about the 365 XL versus the 210 carry. I had not zeroed my 507K, so my 365 XL was shooting a little bit to the right, but good tight groups. And optics, by the way, great teaching tool because you really see the effects that your natural arc of movement and that your trigger press will have on your point of impact because that dot will just be bouncing all over the glass. You also get an idea of what a huge advantage a good trigger is. That isn't to say the 365 XL doesn't have a good trigger. It's actually pretty good for a carry pistol. Only that you're watching the red dot have a seizure when you're working through your trigger press on it, and about halfway through, you're thinking to yourself, man, if this was the 210, we'd be there already. So, Captain Obvious checking in here, but good triggers tend to minimize that pre-shot jostling of the gun, and that probably explains why the 210 carry, without an optic, shot just as well as the 365 XL with an optic. As you might imagine, recoil impulse was minimal. You get a great grip on this single stack gun. The 210 already has a very low bore axis and it's all metal construction, makes recoil very soft. Some carry guns, you suffer through a range session, not the 210, fun as hell to bring to the range. When I originally talked to SIG about this gun, they claimed that they squeezed almost all of the performance from the 210 Classic into the 210 carry. Well, is that true? Fortunately, I have a 210 Classic, so I got out my original Gangster SIG P210A, and we went head to head. All right, felt pretty good. So, this is with the full size 210. Uh, does that count as a break? We're gonna go ahead and count it as a break. We're gonna say, <laughs> just barely, we'll call it everything in the 10 ring. That's seven rounds, seven yards. Everything in the 10 ring, uh, really only two rounds kind of on the outside of the 10 while all the remainder of them break the X.
everything in the 10 and then one on the border of the eight. For me, I definitely felt that the recoil impulse was less. I felt like the contrast sights on here were a little bit easier to pick up than the night sights. Um, I, I just think that flat out, I, I would bet, we're talking seven yards. I mean, what happens when you open this up to, you know, 70 yards, which well, you wouldn't, but you get what I'm saying. It was a close call, but the 210A, the original, was better with a perfect score, knocking out the 10 ring, an entire mag all in the bullseye, too easy, no recoil, slide, gliding on glass, and you can really feel the difference when shooting the all steel frame versus the aluminum, but then again, I would never consider carrying a full-size 210, too big, too heavy. What I think I'm saying is I'm more than happy with the slight reduction in performance from the 210 original to the 210 carry in exchange for the significantly enhanced carrying experience. Bottom line, the 210 carry gives you nearly the same performance as its big brother, but with features optimizing it for concealed carry. Controls are easy to manipulate for the most part. The safety is very well designed for a carry gun where you can affirmatively and assertively flip it on and off and even use it as a thumb shelf if you so desire. I've used some carry guns that have smaller safeties and it can be a bit problematic when you're trying to switch that safety while drawing the gun, but the 210's great. The magazine release button works perfectly, no complaints there. I feel like perhaps the slide release lever is a little bit awkward to get to, maybe a little bit too far forward, where you need to be hitting it with your support thumb rather than your dominant thumb. You can kind of see here where that slowed me down a little bit, so I just said screw it and started manually racking the slide instead of using the release. This did bring a bit of a shortcoming to the surface with pistols that have inverted slide rails like the CZ-75 or the 210. There's just less area back here to grip on. So I miffed a couple of those racks as you can see here. So why would you buy or carry this 210 tuxedo gun versus a Glock 19 or a Sig P365? The main draw is, of course, the amazing single action trigger. Have I felt a better trigger? Yeah, I think so, but off the top of my head, I don't think I can name a better trigger than this one, maybe like on some high-end 1911 or something. A lot of you people worry about these guns being made in the United States versus Switzerland, but as you may recall from my interview with SIG engineer Tim Butler, we did a blind taste test between a mint condition original Swiss 210 and two randomly selected new 210s. We could not tell the difference when pulling the trigger blind. It's that good. It matches the original Swiss model trigger that this series is so famous for. Okay. I, I'm not sure. I think you just handed me the same gun. Are you sure? No. All right. That last one. Now, I, I feel like the last one was different. I'm, I can't say which one was better. Okay. But which one, what, what order did you hand those two me in? I, I can't tell. I, I don't think I can tell the difference. I, I, I mean, Swiss I truly. was the second one. Oh, it was. I, 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 the one with the safety. In on. fact, I was listening because I feel like I know what a modern SIG, that tink, like that. I, I know what a modern SIG hammer dropping sounds like. And I was like, I had the second one. I was like, you're going to save the, save the best for last, you know, mm -hmm. save the Swiss for last. I can't tell the difference. Better trigger translates to better accuracy. It's really hard to beat an all-metal single-action pistol. It's simply going to have a better trigger than a DASA or a striker-fired handgun and give you a better shooting experience than a polymer frame gun. Reason number two, barrel length. The SIG P210 carry has a 4.1-inch barrel, while most subcompacts or microcompacts have barrels between 3 and 4 inches. Let's use the SIG P365 as an example. It has a 3.1-inch barrel, 1 inch shorter than the 210 carry but that extra inch goes a mile in terms of ballistic performance. The fourth inch goes much further than the eighth inch to explain that. Pulling data from ballistics by the inch, a nine millimeter going from a seven inch to an eight inch barrel only results in about a 10 to 20 foot per second velocity increase. Not much, but going from a three inch barrel to a four inch barrel is a tremendous difference, up to 100 feet per second. Spear Gold Dot 124 grain, for example, a great personal defense round, goes from 1,100 feet per second in a 3-inch gun to 1,200 feet per second in a 4-inch gun. That's nearly a 20% gain in energy, plus the additional ballistic performance usually translates to better expansion and better penetration, so the same ammo should be significantly more effective out of a 4-inch barrel. And reason number three, the typical benefits associated with an all-metal frame. Faster follow-up shots would be one of those major benefits. 
Of course, it's heavier to carry, and it's easy to control recoil versus, say, the P365XL. It makes sense, right? It's heavier, which is a penalty for carry, but a bonus for shooting. Some of you may be asking, James, why not just get a similar, less expensive single stack 1911? After all, the Springfield EMP Ronin is nearly the same specs as this 210 carry, but at half the price. But the SIG P210 carry, not only, in my opinion, has a better trigger, but it's also been re-engineered to use the standard SIG-style short locking system instead of what I would consider to be a more complex and historically less reliable linked and lugged system like the 1911. I know that's a controversial statement, take my comments with a grain of salt, but based on my personal experience about the SIG short action, it tends to be simpler and more reliable than what you get out of most 1911s. So in conclusion, is the SIG P210 carry a smarter carry option than the P365XL? I'm not going to say that. It's heavier, it's much more expensive, and with less capacity. But you can't ignore the pragmatic benefits of a better trigger, all-metal construction, fantastic accuracy, and better ballistic performance out of a longer barrel. And it's just a cool f***ing gun. It's handsome, it's well-crafted, the trigger breaks like a crack pipe. It has that faithful 210 heritage with modern features that don't impact the overall performance. After all, I personally did a blind taste test between the American 210 and the Swiss 210, and I couldn't tell the difference. Try it yourself sometime. So if you're looking for the most practical, reasonably priced concealed carry gun, seriously, look elsewhere. But if you're looking for an elegant, fine shooting pistol that can pull double duty as an heirloom and a carry pistol under the appropriate circumstances, then tell Jeeves to pull around the rolls to your nearest authorized SIG dealer because the SIG P210 might be the right tuxedo gun for you. If you're looking for a P210, I highly recommend that you check out Top Gun Supply. They've been supporting us for years now, I love Tom and Michelle at Top Gun. Fantastic customer service. Thank you as usual to Ventura Munitions for sending the ammo that we used in this video. But most of all, thank you guys so much just for watching. It means a lot to us. Take care.